Fast forward a couple of wars to 1964. The Arab League creates the Palestinian Liberation Organization, the PLO. They mobilize the local Arabs, indoctrinate them with hatred towards Jews, and unite them for the first time in history as the Palestinian people. Mazel Tov! A nation is born! The Palestinians! Article 24 of their charter states that the Palestinians have no claim to the West Bank or Gaza, which were under the control of Jordan and Egypt respectively. Their charter calls for the total annihilation of the State of Israel. Three years later, Israel liberates Gaza and the West Bank, and the Palestinians immediately amend Article 24. The stubborn Israelis refuse to be annihilated and are subjected to constant terror attacks continuing to the present day. Pop quiz. The terror is a result of the occupation. True or false? Trick question. What occupation? There is no occupation. Judea, Israel, is the land of the aboriginal Jews. Their indisputable connection to their ancestral homeland is undeniable. It's in the archaeological evidence, the historical record, and the genetic analysis. Arab terrorism started about 50 years before what uninformed people call the occupation. So that can't be its cause. Is it retaliation by anticipation? And then there's this war that lasts six days. It starts when the Egyptian army moves towards the Israeli border, and Egyptian President Nasser boasts, My army will destroy the Zionist entity. Six days later, Israel crushes the four Arab armies that attacked it, conquering the Sinai Peninsula, including Gaza from Egypt and the Golan Heights from Syria. They liberate the so-called West Bank, including the old city of Jerusalem from Jordan. After almost 2,000 years, the Israeli flag is raised over the Western Wall, a remnant of the Jewish Temple, where members of all religions can now pray freely. Since it was built by King David, Jerusalem has been attacked 52 times, besieged 23 times, ransacked 39 times, destroyed twice, rebuilt three times, and captured and recaptured 44 times. 3,000 years later, Jerusalem remains the indivisible capital of Israel. No country's birth certificate is more legitimate than that of Israel. Pop quiz. Israel is rich and the Palestinians are poor. True or false? Mostly true, but why? Have you ever wondered where all the money donated to the Palestinians go? Or how Yasser Arafat, the PLO's first president, became the first Palestinian billionaire? No clues needed here. The Palestinian Authority, to this day, uses the foreign aid it receives to pay over $345 million a year to convicted terrorists and their families. After another failed attempt by the Arabs to destroy Israel, a peace agreement with Egypt is signed, then with Jordan, and more recently with African and Gulf states. It just goes to show, when Israel has a partner for peace, it doesn't take long for peace to materialize. Pop quiz. Israel is an apartheid state. True or false? Hogwarts. Sorry, hogwash. Over 20% of Israelis are Palestinians, with full and equal rights. Among Israeli Palestinians are doctors, Supreme Court justice, generals, a Miss Israel, and members of parliament. The Arabic language is recognized under special status in Israel. Palestinians in Israel are freer than in any Arab state. Does that sound like apartheid? You call it. The Palestinians demand a state of their own, clean of Jews. <laughs> That's because they hate racists. What is it about world leaders that they are comfortable with the concept that if it's a Jewish territory, the rights of the Arabs must be respected, but if it's a territory for the Palestinian state, it must be free of all Jews? And what gives? In 2005, in a thunderstorm of irony, Israel commits ethnic cleansing. It forcibly relocates the entire Jewish population of Gaza, over 8,000 people, creating something that no other civilized country would dare do. With hope for peace, they hand over the entire area to the Palestinians without a single Jew in it. The gratitude is instantaneous. Rockets start flying into Israel. Instead of building Gaza into a thriving, peaceful society, it becomes a terrorist base hell-bent on destroying Israel. So deep is the Palestinian hatred of the Jews that in order not to be seen as taking anything from them, they demolish an extensive infrastructure of greenhouses purchased for them by American donors and which provided thousands of jobs. Here's a present. It's a quiz. Gaza is a huge concentration camp. True or false? It's a big fat lie. The most common medical condition among Gaza's women is obesity. Not exactly the usual concentration camp malady. 
It's true that to protect Israeli civilians they can't cross into Israel, but they also share an eight-mile border with Egypt, a Muslim state. Why is it that only Israel is accused of not letting them out? Why don't their Muslim brothers allow them to pass through Egypt? It's for the same reason that Israel doesn't. 2005 sees an increased danger to Israel's security and legitimacy. The attempts to demonize, delegitimatize, and criminalize Israel by some Arab nations is joined by non-state actors such as BDS, J Street, and the New Israel Fund. These Jewish and non-Jewish anti-Semitic provocateurs spread outright lies and malicious misinformation in an attempt to destroy the modern state of Israel. This is the sweetest thing that can be said about them. After Dachau and Auschwitz, Jews have learned to overcome the likes of these. But not everyone has been drinking from this anti-Semitic Kool-Aid. Many world leaders have loudly and consistently spoke out in support of Israel. Israel must exist and has the right to exist. Israel is the child of hope and home of the brave. You're just going to have to get used to the fact that Jews defend themselves. And another damn quiz. The UN is always condemning Israel. True or false? True. Israel is delegitimatized and demonized at the UN like no other country in the world. If Algeria introduced a resolution declaring that the earth was flat and that Israel had flattened it, it would pass by a vote of 164 to 13 with 26 abstentions. Over 70% of all UN General Assembly resolutions single out Israel. Criticizing Israel politics is not anti-Semitic. Disproportionately criticizing and demonizing Israel is anti-Semitic. <coughs> when Israel expels 12 Palestinian agitators, the UN goes ballistic with condemnations. Kuwait and Saudi Arabia expel a million Palestinians after the Gulf War and it's not even put on the UN agenda. Palestinians claim that the key to solving all the Middle East problems is the resolution of the Palestinian-Israeli dispute. If the pure force of repetition would make it true, then this claim would rank right up there with Newton's laws. A Sunni Muslim detonates a car bomb in a crowd of Shiites. In revenge, a Shiite Muslim blows up a sacred Sunni holy site. A million dead in the Iraq-Iran war. Bashar al-Assad uses chemical weapons on his people. Does anyone believe that these Muslim-on-Muslim -Muslim atrocities would stop if we only resolved the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Anyone? The Arabs could have had peace with Israel on very easy terms at any time since 1948. Every Israeli government attempts to reach a peace agreement with the Arabs. The so-called two-state solution is rejected again and again and again and again. President Trump's peace plan is rejected by the Palestinians sight unseen. That's more rejection than you get in show business. Last pop quiz, promise. If the Palestinians lay down their weapons, there will be no more war. If Israel lays down its weapons, there will be no more Israel. True or false? Unfortunately, true. Israel hopes for peace, although the Palestinians' answer is always the same. No! From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. We promise to get back to that, and well, we are back. Palestine today is free, and once again called by its aboriginal name. Israel.